right, welcome back to the channel. Um, today we are going to be looking at my Z3, which I've owned for six months. Um, it's been my daily driver. It's not let me down once. Um, so yeah, just a few good things about it, a few bad, and uh, a little drive. Maybe in there. 
I tend to be quite keen on carrying general maintenance stuff in my cars, toolboxes and um, socket sets and jump lead. So there's a couple of things to consider before you, you take it out really. I think there's quite a misconception that you could not use a convertible the whole year round. I don't see why not, I really don't. You used yours the whole year round, didn't you? Yeah. For life? yeah. Yeah, for like two years. Yeah. So this engine is quite well known for being very hardy. I've, I've really not had a single issue with it. Um, I've just done plugs and an oil change. I believe the iron block. Uh, no variable valve timing, nothing really fancy to go wrong on it. Just a classic clunky 16 valve. I do know in terms of performance mods, essentially the only thing that makes a big difference is aftermarket cams because they are quite lazy cams from, from factory. Um, and it does make a huge difference to sound as well, they sound superb. It does feel quite front heavy and you will feel that if you're really pushing on in it. Um, surprisingly, the, the difference in handling when I replaced the rear tyres was quite immense. Um, the tendency to understeer then became yeah, very apparent. I think it's a great looking car really and out of all the cars I've had, it's the ones that I get the most compliments in, for some reason. Standard issues you will notice with these are going to be very roof oriented. Uh, within three weeks of having this, I had quite a lot of the stitching deteriorate from the um, screen, the plastic screen and the actual um, fabric itself. And then later on, I went to put the roof down, it was quite a frosty morning. I'm an idiot and it cracked completely down the middle so a new screen is definitely a maintenance item if you manage to pick up a Z3 that's not had the roof done just get it done a leaky boot that's another thing to look out for I've been quite lucky I've not had that issue but a lot of these have issues um, letting water in through the central brake light on the, on the boot lid um, and also through the rubber bung of the car aerial but Really, the issues people have with these are, are typically quite trivial. Fuel economy isn't great. It might be that uh, I've got a little bit of a vacuum issue with this, so I think that does affect it, but it still really is sort of 30, 35. You don't have cruise control or anything to help mediate your fuel consumption, so it is down to you. I've not yet had this on any different wheels and I don't think I will because I really love the, the chunky five spoke style. I know some people run the 2.8s on some bigger wheels, sometimes CSL wheels look quite nice but it apparently does make a huge difference to um, just general comfort. Hey yo! And I don't want to make that sacrifice basically. A um, little more about modifications, if I were to do anything to this personally I'd keep it very simple. Um, it would be lowering springs and wheel spaces. Um, coilovers could be argued for, but again, comfort is quite important for me. When you come to lowering these, there's not a great deal you can do before you have to look at relocating brake lines and fuel lines, which is a real pain. I was just saying to Dom, is um, in a way there's nothing too intensely unique about this in a, in a sense. It's not. There's no big quirks that would take you by surprise or maybe feel that inspiring about it. But that's quite pleasant in a way. Um, it's what you'd expect it to be, a 90s roadster. It feels easy. Um, I don't ever have to worry about this. I don't have to worry about it breaking down on me, really. Um, it's, it's been, fingers crossed, it's been pretty flawless. I might not have that light-footed feeling of an Agile MX-5, which was this direct competitor really at the time, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, it do come with an LSD if you get the 2.8, which is also a wide body, so it looks a bit nicer, but the, the premium they command, in my mind, isn't really worth it. They're easily over double the price of the 1.9s. Um, and I'm sure if I drove one, I, I would understand the hype, but... I don't see the need to spend that money really, six, seven grand on a Z3. Some of the design cues I think are really unique to this car though, in fairness. Um, maybe it's driving characteristics, not so much, but the actual way it looks, there's not really a car that's comparable in terms of that clamshell bonnet and the um, 
side vents and the way it flares around the sides of the wheels. Um, it really is quite a unique look. In some ways, I almost think it's inspired by sort of like World War II fighter planes. Uh, the way the bonnet sweeps back into this door, the grills on the side of the bonnet. Um, it's got, yeah, it's got quite an aggressive look, like a means business. You know the, the Z4? Yes. It doesn't have that, does it? It doesn't have the gills on the front. No, the Z4 is altogether like a, quite a bit more bulbous. Yeah. Um, but the, um, the newer Z4, I can't remember which one it is, yeah. the E89 or whatever, well, my boss has, mm. it does have those gills on the front wings. Oh, okay. Which is right. an interesting comparison. The E85 in overall is quite a bit more smoothed out. Yeah, it's, it's very got quite definitive nut like lines to it. Um, which yeah. is quite a nice styling cube, but. I think the newer, not the newest Z4, but the E89 or whatever it is, that looks more like a Z3 than the E85 does. Yeah, I do think the E85 has got quite a charm to it as well, though. It really looks like something of its time. It looks like that early noughties. Oh, yeah, um, for sure. It's a very sleek car. Yeah, like the concept cars of that age. Yeah, yeah, I love the look of the Z4s. That was also a choice for me um, a while ago. It was, do I invest a bit more money and look at a Z4? Or go for a Z3? And personally, I I actually think the Z4 attracted me more initially. Uh, but when you look at the interior, and when you drive one, I found it even, even more predictable than this in some ways. Um, I'm sure it would, would be quite exciting with some of the bigger engine choices that they have. And a coupe would be lovely. But again, price bracket, this cost me £1,600. I wasn't sure about the colour combo at first. Green leather is um, quite hit or miss. Well, I don't think I've ever seen it hit. But um, <laughs> this worked.